The Wing Feather Saga by Andrew Peterson. Book 4 The Warden and the Wolf King. Chapter 52 Into the Blackwood. When they made it back to the fort, Ood was seated beside a bonfire, reciting poetry to a gathering of cloven who were pretending to enjoy it. He smiled when he saw the boys and limped over to greet them with a roasted toothy cow haunch in one hand. Cloven like Ood's words, he said happily. He waved at the cloven, who waved back, visibly relieved that the recital was over. Go get Nag now? Yes, Ood. Kalmar said as he marched straight to the main gate. Go get Nag! Janner jogged to keep up, waving apologetically at the cloven, watching them pass. When Kalmar got to the gate, he tugged at it and found it locked. He turned to Cadwick. Are you coming? Yes, Brother Cloven, he said. I would prefer to let you go alone, but Queen Arundel has asked me to lead you into darkness. First, I must bid farewell to my family. I may never see them again. Cadwick fixed them both with a heavy look, then turned to the building where Mother Mungry had tended to Ood. When he reached the door, a feminine cloven with sleek black fur and the head of a quill diggle flung it open and embraced him. Two young cloven clambered around his four legs, and another one shimmied onto his back. Remember, love, you are Cadwick, blacksmith of Pennybridge. You are in my heart, and my heart will wait for your return. The young ones cooed and gurgled as Ed Elder Cadwick embraced them and kissed their malformed faces. Farewell, children, said Cadwick tenderly. Cling to Kiana, for she loves you well. Mother Mungry brushed, bustled through the door, and handed Cadwick a statue. You'll find bombs in here, as well as some cracklings. Is your foot well? My foot? Cadwick asked. Someone's foot was broken, was it not? She poked at one of his hooves. It was the troll, Cadwick said with a chuckle. Ah! She looked at Janner. Is your foot well then? Janner nodded, flexing first one foot and then the other so she could see. Cadwick placed the young ones on the ground, kissed his wife on the forehead, and joined the boys at the gate. Elder Cadwick looked up at the sentry at the top of the wall. Are the cows gone? Yes, sir, for now. Be careful out there, sir. Cadwick nodded. The gate swung open, and they stepped into the tangle of trees. The forest was silent and foreboding, and Janner suddenly wanted to stay. What did they think they were doing? Striking out into a forest of monsters, only to sneak into a dungeon of monsters? only to infiltrate the stronghold of a monster so powerful he had basically destroyed the world? It seemed like the height of foolishness, even for a seasoned warrior, more so for two boys who didn't know what they were doing. The walls of Clovenfast were strong and sure. If Nag had been dumping his failed meldings into the wilds all these years, then it seemed he didn't care about the Blackwood or consider it a threat. Maybe the best thing would be to bring Lily and the rest of the family to Clovenfast, where they could finally get some peace. But moving and running and hiding were all they had done since they escaped Glipwood. First to Pete's Castle, then to the Ice Prairies, then to the Green Hollows. No matter where they went, Nag the Nameless found them, attacked them, and in the process hurt everyone around them. Clovenfast would be no different. As they walked, Janner glanced behind him for a last glimpse of Clovenfast, but the gate was shut, already hidden by branches and budding leaves. They may as well have been alone in the middle of the Blackwood. It was no wonder the Hollows folk knew nothing about Clovenfast. Maybe Nag didn't know about it either, nor would he. After walking in silence for an hour, Janner noticed the trees grew fatter and the branches fewer. They were following a faint path, probably made by wild animals or cloven, and Janner could tell by the slant of the late afternoon sun that they were heading south. How far is it? he asked. I don't know. Elder Cadwick didn't look at either of the boys as he spoke, but stared straight ahead as if he were walking in his sleep. It could be hours, or it could be days. I have tried to avoid the southern forest since I remembered my name and hoped I would never have to go back. 
A foolish hope, it turns out. There was an edge of anger in his voice, and Janner decided not to ask any more questions. You don't have to do this, you know, Kalmar said. We were on our way to Throg before we even knew you existed. We can push on alone. Go back to your family. Cadwick looked over his shoulder in the direction of Clovenfast. He curled his lip and shook his head. The queen has ordered me. I will obey. Well, I'm the king and I'm ordering you to go back. Kalmar stepped in front of Cadwick and stopped in the middle of the path. We know the entrance to the deeps is south of here. We know it's somewhere at the base of the Kilridge Mountains. We're trained Durgans. You may think we can't take care of ourselves, but we made it this far. Go back to your family. Nag has taken enough from you already. Cadwick's tail twitched as he considered Kalmar's words. If indeed your brother is the boy Queen Al Rundel prophesied of, then he must be kept safe. Janner started to speak up for himself, but Kalmar interrupted. We also have a troll on our side. Not many boys can say that. Oot smash, the troll said. Elder Cadwick's front hoof pawed the ground, and he adjusted his scabbard. Very well. I'm going back. Really? Kalmar said. I have young ones to care for in a city to protect. I wish you a safe journey. Cadwick turned and clopped back the way they had come. Wait, Janner called. I don't know if this is such a good idea. We might need you. Courage, boy. You have a troll on your side, remember? Cadwick said over his shoulder. Kelmar, stop him. We don't know our way around this forest. Neither does he. He just told us so. Besides, he didn't want to be here, and I don't blame him. But... <laughs> But Janner was so flummoxed he couldn't think of what to say. He looked from Kalmar to Cadwick, who was rapidly disappearing into the forest. Then he was gone. And now we're alone, Janner said. Why would you send back the one person in our little band who knows the forest best? Because he scared me, Kalmar said. That wasn't what Janner expected. What do you mean? I know what it feels like to lose myself. It's awful. And the worst of it is I don't know what's happening until it's over. Can you imagine what he would be like if he snapped and turned wild? He's almost as tall as Ood. Ood not afraid of horsemen, the troll said. I know you're not, Kalmar said. But if Cadwick got weird on us and you had to stop him, those little cloven back there would lose the only father they're ever going to have. We only left an hour ago and he was already different. Meaner or something. I was afraid of him. Janner had to admit he had sensed the change too. But now that Cadwick was gone, the forest seemed like the more frightening enemy. They had a long way to go. And the sun was beginning to set. Fine, let's go, Janner said. Kalmar sniffed the air and pointed. This way, I think, and try to be as quiet as you can. He marched on. Why? Janner asked. Because I can smell five toothy cows nearby, and a bunch of cloven, too.